Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Military Mutterings, where I, Kevin Janssen, am joined by Tubo again. I think you have you have heard of him in some of our previous videos. Is there anything you want to say hi or...? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> yes, very nice, just like the previous videos. Well, today we're going to talk about the M1 Abrams, the workhorse of the Gulf, or just... The big bad American MBT, if you want to call it that. So I think we'll just start with the prototypes. The uh, the XM1s. Do you have anything specific to say about this tubo? Um, overall, they're very similar in their capabilities, but the two defining factors that make them different are, or rather the defining factor that makes them different is the power pack, wherein the GM1, which you can see at the bottom, uh, is powered by a standard diesel engine, whilst the Chrysler one, which you can see at the top there, is uh, powered by a turbine engine, which is multi-fuel. Yeah, and I believe, I don't I don't know if this is um, absolutely correct, but I believe they also preferred the hull design of the Chrysler ones. As you can see, they are vastly different, whereas the uh, General Motors has the driver sitting on the left side and has a more simple sloped plate, if you want to call it that. And the Chrysler has a much more angled upper plate, and the driver actually sits in the middle below the gun. But I don't know for sure, but I think that was also some of the defining factors as to why they chose the Chrysler in the end. Yes. But we're not going to go in too deep into doing the prototypes, but just, just a little bit of history if you wanted to know. Yeah. They here, both also used the same gun. Yeah, the 100, and, uh, I think license produced version of the L7. The M68A1, which is a, a variant of the L72. Yeah, exactly. Well, here we've got the M1 and the M1IP. The uh, I wouldn't call them production versions, but the first Abrams really ran out of um, the production lines. <laughs> yeah, no, they were the first production variants of the Abrams. It's just that these versions are short-lived, to say the least. Yeah. Um... These are still armed with the M68A1 main cannon. Uh, but this is where you really see the, the Abrams actually start to take shape. Uh, you get the, you know, very blocky type uh, it's Abrams main... look that, uh, that, that you come to associate with. Yeah, it's mainly the turret that does it for me when, it, when you look at the Abrams. But I think yep. something funny that I saw here is the the first M1s were still called XM1s originally <laughs> because the production had not really started yet, so they were still designated XM1. It was only yeah. later that they were re really uh, designated to M1s, but I think it's funny that this, uh, this, uh, the first ones also had the XM1 name. <laughs> yeah, and the difference between the M1 and the M1 IP is that the M1 IP is uh, equipped with uh, better armor. Yeah, the way, way, way thicker armor. Package. Yeah, improved armor. Just yeah. much better armor, but the, the gun remains exactly the same, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it is the same, yes. Yeah. Well, then, I guess we'll go into the biggest versions of the Abrams ones. <laughs> yeah, here we see the M1A1 on top and the M1A2 uh, on the bottom. The bottom one being equipped with the tank urban survival kit. Uh, the notable difference here going from M1 to M1A1 is the addition of a license produced version of the L44 uh, which the Americans call the M256 uh, it is a 120mm gun which is a significant improvement over the 105mm gun that they had used previously uh, the M1A1 is uh, significant in that it was the first Abram variant that ever saw combat uh, in the Gulf War, and notably in Operation Desert Storm. Well, I think, uh, speaking of the yeah. gum, I, I don't know a whole lot about the Abrams, but did they ever incorporate an L55? Uh, they did have a one they did as a one-off prototype, yes. Uh, incorporate the L55. Oh yeah, I think I'll just so, add that photo in post, actually. So here you go, everybody can see the L55. Although it was yeah. just a one-off prototype. I must say, the Abrams does look a bit better <laughs> with such a longer gun, if you ask me. Yeah, if I I would presume that uh, a later variant of the Abrams or the next 
tank that the US Army decides to put into service is going to have an L-55 or a larger gun, perhaps. Yeah. Also, something uh, I should say about the M1s and this video, there you should probably look for yourself because there are a ton of variants and extra ERA kits. So we're only just going to skim over the more primary versions, if you will. Yeah. Did you have something to say? Uh, yes. Uh, going from M1A1 <clears throat> to M1A2, uh, the major differences are an increase in armor and the addition of a CITV and an APU in some variants. Uh, though the APU might also have been added uh, on some M M1A ones during service. Uh, yeah. The CITV being the commander's independent thermal viewer, which is quite important for a modern tank. Yeah. And speaking of the bottom one with the Tusk, was that one specifically made for more urban environments? Or was it just like a general... Yeah, uh, Tusk is uh, uh, an abbreviation of Tank Urban Survival Kit, which includes... Uh, an addition of a crew system or a crew remote operated weapon station, uh, additional thermal uh, viewers for crew, uh, a infantry radio at the back, uh, some RPG fencing, if you can call it that, <laughs> on the back of the engine, in some cases anyway. And most importantly, or what stands out the most, which is the ERA package on the sides of the tank, which adds yeah. significant amounts of uh, chemical protection compared to what was already there. If I'm not mistaken, the M1 is one of the heaviest um, MBTs in service, is it not? Uh, Definitely heavier yeah. than stuff like a Leopard 2 that we see in Europe. Yeah, um, they can range from the mid-60s to just short of like 70 tons. <laughs> the M1A2C being about 74 tons. Yeah. So it is an incredibly heavy tank. Uh now, I believe the M1A2 worse. is still in service, is it not? Uh, yeah, the M1A2 is still in service. It is actually in service with uh, quite a few countries. Yeah, uh, the think... Abrams has been very widely exported. I think America is starting to phase... Well, not phase them out, but looking for a replacement. Yeah, uh, they have correct, started designing but... a new one. Yeah. Yes. Uh, notably, also, the Abrams has been exported to... Or is being exported to Taiwan... Uh, to upgrade their tank force and replace their, or back up their CM11 tanks and uh, light armor forces. Yeah. It will be the most advanced Abrams uh, tank to ever be exported. You like to hear on the internet that the export versions have lighter armor. Is Do you happen to know if that's true or not? Depends. Or are, are uh, these like the same as the American ones? I mean, obviously they're not going to be the same because usually they're not going to have their uranium inserts. For example, the oh, yeah. Taiwanese one, which is said to be the most advanced Abrams export ever made, is still not going to have those uranium inserts. It is still going. It is still going to have composite, but uh, it is going to have a different insert. Yeah, uh, can, but protection can, um, can levels can vary, that. of course. Yeah, but I can understand that from an American standpoint. Having the uh, uranium armor, <laughs> you would kind of want to have that on your side. You wouldn't want to export that all over the place. No, not that it really makes a difference nowadays. No, that is true, especially with the new Rheumatoid gun that they're whipping around. Right. Mm, well, well, that and the prevalence of uh, ATGM crews. That too. But speaking of big Rheumatoid gun, I guess we can also talk about the big <laughs> M1 uh, gun carriers, if you want to call it that. Yeah, one-off prototypes. Or yeah, they're, they're prototype one vehicles prototypes. that carry silly guns that would never <laughs> ever make it to production. I'm at least happy that they at least trialed these. So these yeah, are the... They do, uh, they do look fun. Yeah, the, these are the CATTB, which is one at the top, and the M1 Thumper, which is at the bottom. When I look up M1 Thumper, I see the top image popping up a lot. So I'm a little bit confused as to which one is which, but considering the bottom one has Thumper literally written at the front, I think the bottom one is Thumper and the top one is CATTB. So the... That may well be. Hmm? That may well be. Yeah. So the CATTB is actually an advanced technology test bed. I think it incorporated a lot of different things among with the um, the bigger gun, but I also think it has a bigger engine. If you, you can, of course, see that the turret is well extremely heavily armored at the front. Smoke grenades. I think it's 
It's kind of a shame that these didn't really get anywhere because, at least turret-wise, excluding the gun, I think the turret does actually look like an improvement overall armor-wise. But when it comes to the thumper, the uh, one at the bottom, it's a more, well, I want to say a lower profile version of the CATTB. It's just an Abrams incorporating the 140mm gun, along with some blowout panels for that gun. And it's, yeah. I think it's a real shame that these didn't really get anywhere, but I can completely understand why. <laughs> I think this is a little bit too much of an overkill, or especially around those times. There, yeah, there's no point, or there was no point. Nowadays, you know, there are uh, talks of France uh, reactivating their programs with their uh, 140mm Leclerc yeah. variant. So there definitely seems to be an interest in, in acquiring larger guns nowadays. What also with the 130mm Rheumatol uh, test bed that they made with a Challenger 2. Yeah. I mean, if you look at back in the day when these were made, there was really just no need because the 120 was more than enough. But now, with modern day technologies and ERA and all that, I can sort of understand wanting a bigger gun. And who knows, maybe America will initiate some sort of a new <laughs> gun program for their future Abrams replacements. Yeah, maybe. It will be interesting to see. Well, and then at the end, we've got some other variants. Because, of course, when you've got an M1 Abrams, a main production line MBT, you're, of course, going to have many other versions of it. We can see bridge layers, we can see, well, whatever those are with the dozer. I believe those are the uh, sort of it's combat, combat engine. Yeah. It's, it's a combat engineering vehicle. Yeah, so not made for anti tank, <laughs> but just made to support the troops, really. We can also see at the uh, bottom right, we can see the M1 TTB, which is a remote, well, remote controlled turret, I want to say. There, there are no crew in there, the loading system is below the turret itself, it's just, it looks weird, if you ask me. The gun is too small to be put on Abrams, but still, I think it's a cool project. Only sadly, it didn't really go anywhere, if I'm correct. And then, at the top left, we can see one of the more... I want to say well-known project. This is the air defense or just dual purpose M1 Abrams. It's got a twin 35mm Bushmaster at the front and then I believe in total eight ADATs, dual purpose missiles <laughs> loaded in the back as well. These missiles can take out air targets and they can also be used against tanks. It's a crazy project but it never got past the uh, design phase. None of these were built in any way. But yeah. I think that is it for the M1 Abrams. Do you have anything to add to this, Tuba? Um, not really, other than that nowadays the Abrams is also being fitted with the trophy system, along with uh, many other vehicles in the world. Yeah, as is the case with a modern MBT like this, they are constantly changing. These are still in production. It's not yes. like we're covering an old World War II vehicle, but so, yeah. Honestly, just that. do your own research, I'd say. Go look into all these variants, because there are so many of them, and they're all very interesting. But yeah, I think that's going to be it for today. Um, thanks for watching. Be sure to tune in for the next episode, which will be a boat, if I am correct. German one, two. <laughs> I'm not going to spoil too much. But anyways, I want to thank Tubo for being on this video again, for helping out. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye.